positive. With the new expansion out, I'll definitely have a much better time with the skills I learned. You worry too much. Just trust me on this. That was never here before. Yeah, but what happened to it? was draining energy from portals, and now this? What are his intentions? Eek! Now! Nah! Everyone is familiar with Jim Henson's Muppets. From Sesame Street, Fraggle Rock, and The Muppet Show, these talking puppets have granted us many laughs and offered us hours upon hours of entertainment through their satirical skits, memorable characters, and lessons about life that even at the level of a child still hold meaning that most other shows out there that try to brainwash our children with... Well, you get the idea. The Muppets of any kind are timeless, and there's always something positive to look forward to. Now we look at the negative side of the Muppet, in something that's not Jim Henson related, but rather Peter Jackson. Yes, that Peter Jackson, the same one who had a hand in the Lord of the Rings movies. He and Fran Walsh, writer of all of his films, created a film that is essentially a comical satire of the Muppets in every way possible. It's time to meet the Feebles. Possibly the most offensive film to have ever been created. What can this film do that someone like Ralph Bakshi cannot? Let's find out. And already we have a parallel to the Muppets. Why they open up with their own song and dance about what it is their show is about. Anyway, this movie is comprised of many subplots, involving many characters, including Harry, the ambitious and yet perverted rabbit, and Heidi, who you could probably guess what Muppet she's a parody of. Alright, you fat slag, move your ass! How dare you speak to me like that, you horrible, spiteful little rat! I won't stand for this treatment any longer! I'm an artist! I demand respect! Trevor, you haven't upset her again, have you? You know what happens when she gets into a tiz. Oh, the old cow's had it too good for too long. Like it or not, Trevor, she's the star of the show. There's no feebles without Heidi. Either it's for her singing voice or her appearance. Because as we all know, it's not talent or individual personality. It's how attractive one is. So she goes to her boyfriend, Bletch, who happens to be a walrus, and... Oh, God! All I know about walruses is that out of all mammals, they have the second largest penis. I have the first. Why, that foul-mouthed little rodent, I'll give him a, a good talking to. If it happens again, I shan't perform. Oh, God. Women. <sighs> When are you gonna dump that hookery mall? Hookery mall, she may be, but she's also our major draw card. Show some guts, Blatch. Get rid of her. God, wouldn't I like to? I'm not waiting around forever. Don't worry, honey. I'm working on it. I have a sneaking suspicion that most of these characters are going to be very unlikable, 
and I'm pretty sure that was the intent. Well, not everyone seems to be bad, as we're introduced to Robert. He's a newcomer who seems nice enough, though everyone else seems too stressed out to even help him. However, there's one particular character named F.W. Fly, who you'll be seeing a lot. I've been an admirer of the Feebles for such a long time. Yeah, <laughs> well, you'll find it pretty tough on the wages they dish out, but if you ever want to earn a little extra on the side, I'm always interested in little stories. Anything spicy or even smutty. You must be Robert. Uh, just call me Arthur. Here, you don't want that, son. He's a no-good muckraker from the gutter press. Got nothing better to do than make up lies and nasty stories about the cast. And yet you let him roam around backstage so freely and without any restraint. I guess that's the power of the First Amendment. While Robert is introduced to the ladies, he spots one particular female named Lucille, who seems to be rather attracted to him and him to her. Well, sadly, he has some competition from Trevor, the drug dealing rat. I wouldn't mind giving her a book with the old pork sword. <laughs> well, we gotta get that R rating somehow. All that's missing is puppet penis. One thing I should mention, the songs in this movie are actually pretty good. Stand opposite my oh my, got one leg missing. Got one leg missing. I got one leg missing. How do I get around? Shiny, shiny fishy in the ocean. This one in particular has a fast and very upbeat feel to it, and the lyrics definitely go with the overall tone of the movie. Oh my, it seems this is what happens when Kermit the Frog gets high on drugs. I, 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 I got the shakes, something bad, if I, if I don't get a fix, I, 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 I won't be able to fall. Well, you'd better find another 50 bucks before six. Oh, that's all I'm <laughs> so Robert tries his hand at getting Lucille to go out with him, but is far too shy to even do it right. Luckily, Arthur the Worm here helps him out through a song act. My amour, what I adore, oh Lucy, oh Lucy. Keep going, keep going. Under the light of the Spanish moon, it is for love that I croon this tune, Lucy. Now, despite what happens later, this is probably the one subplot of the movie I do like. As far as the character development goes and the story behind it, it comes off as something I could see happening to people who are pretty much the only likable characters in this movie. I mean, with Bletch, he's a cheating asshole who eats fish people, and Samantha, who's a whore in every aspect of the word, and we haven't even gotten into the rest of the characters. Also forgive me if these scenes come out of order, but given the flow of this movie's narrative, I try to keep scenes consistent when going over pieces of subplot, especially when some scenes are shorter than others. Anyway, Heidi gets told by Samantha about Bletch hating her, and of course it results in fighting. How dare you insult me! You, you cheap pussy! Yeah, you smack that pussy! Cat. And now we get a scene that violates the standards of human nature. We have throw up, pissing, and even better, flattened puppet meat and cannibalism. Such are the ways of anti-muppetry, all forced on you for your viewing pleasure. We later see Sidney, who seems to have a paternity problem. It seems this Sandy character he slept with had a baby, and she's trying to claim that it's his, despite him saying otherwise. Now at first you'd think, what, that's it? A satire to bad parenting? But then, well... <laughs> Let's just say you'll never look at Horton Hatches the Egg the same way again. Oh, Sandy, why did you bring us here? It's not mine, you know it's not. We'll let the court decide that, shall we? <laughs> Got your eyes, Sid. <laughs>
Now I'm going to take a guess and say that this is meant to take a stab at inbreeding or interracial relationships. Since with how this movie runs, I say they're counting it as another sin on humanity. As Heidi drowns her sorrows in chocolate cake, the lady's choice, we get a flashback to her when she was slimmer and whose voice wasn't as cracked, but still good enough to provide a really jazzy song. The action, but you don't wanna pay the price. You're gonna end up in traction if you don't take my advice. You want a piece of the pie, but you don't wanna share with me. See, who is that day? That's a hard one. Ain't she something? She only been here a week and already she's a pack in the joint. <laughs> With a voice like that, she's gonna go places. Okay, I retract what I said before about them using her for her looks, as using her for her voice makes a lot more sense given what we just saw. But it doesn't really matter, since later we see that looks are what Bletch will care about. Speaking of, it seems his little golf game from earlier was just a ruse to get in some drugs. Isn't he just despicable? Ooh, more throw up. So nasty. Oh, and you'll never see this scenario again. Harry the Rabbit having a threesome. Only in Meet the Feebles. Ah, ah, ah. That thing perfect! Just a little creep with a bad case of chism pressure. How do you a chism pressure, Harry? I can feel it coming on. Oh boy, it's gonna be a gushing! Oh, oh. So now we find out that Trevor likes to shoot pornographic films, which Robert ends up discovering, which leads into a short subplot involving this cow, an aardvark named Dennis, and some monster fish I'm just gonna call Lord Wu Fact-Fact. And yes, the censor box is telling you something about his package. But enough with that, we later have Robert, during another nicely sounding musical act, show that he might be a little too professional for these low lives. You were instructed to stay up stage left. Italian pennant bearers of the 17th century were frequently known to patrol the rampart on the lookout for Turkish invaders. How very elucidating. I've been reading up on it, sir. My drama teacher at school said I should always research a world thoroughly. And that's how he got his role as Mr. Pricklepants in Toy Story 3. Now for Harry's subplot. Seems that threesome got him sick and he doesn't know why. Which leads to the fly wanting to ruin his reputation through scandals involving his secret illness. Also... Here to join me for lunch. <laughs> Check, please. Anyway, Robert is assigned by Sebastian the Fox to be Winyard's new knife-throwing partner. Winyard is suffering from withdrawals and wants money to buy more drugs, but Robert doesn't want to. He then tells him a Vietnam story that's supposed to be a parody of The Deer Hunter, Though, personally, I like to think of this as the real Max L. Frog Warrior. Yeah. Come with me. Thanks, Jim. I owe you one. I wasn't about to see my best buddy pepper with Charlie's lead. Basically, he and his friend were captured at one point, but after escaping, his friend fell down a hole, and rather than save him like how his friend saved him, he runs off like a coward. So out of pity, Robert gives him some money anyway. Now I'm gonna skim over a few scenes, but basically Bletch wants Trevor to find a new star for his porno movies, and thinks about using Lucille. As for Harry, he finds out what he has. It's the big one, Harry. No, no, not the big I'll one! I'll have to notify the health authorities. They want a list of your sexual partners for the last 12 months. It can't be true! It can't be! I've taken precautions! Oh, Harry, don't you know? Man, everybody got AIDS and shit. 